Mr. Speaker, it is my view that people generally has a positive view of the fire and emergency services in terms of their response when called out. I believe we can all agree, Mr. Speaker, that the St. Lucia Fire Service performs an important role in protecting the lives of citizens and property. Mr. Speaker, the St. Lucia Labour Party government has recognized the important role played by the St. Lucia Fire and Emergency Services. Indeed, Mr. Speaker, our government from 1997 have modernized and transformed the security services in St. Lucia, including the police, fire, and correctional services in St. Lucia. Through the provision of new infrastructure, vehicles, and increase in human resource personnel. This has resulted, Mr. Speaker, in the construction of the many new police stations in St. Lucia, and of course, the construction of the Bodily Correctional Facility. This year, work has started on the new Grosile Police Station and rehabilitation works on the Viewfort Police Station. In the case of the Fire and Emergency Service, our government constructed fire services, fire stations in Grosile, Viewfort, Miku, and Denry. This has resulted in a significant improvement in the working conditions of fire officers through the provision of modern fire stations. Our government also significantly increased the number of fire officers to support the expansion in the fire services. This loan for the fire services, Mr. Speaker, reflects a continuation, not a beginning, a continuation of the importance that our government places on the fire services. This loan will provide financing for upgrading equipment available to fire officers as articulated by the Prime Minister, enhancing life and emergency infrastructure for more resilience to climate and environmental hazards, and importantly, Mr. Speaker, improving the work environment. Under this loan, Mr. Speaker, fire officers will receive industry standard training to improve skill levels and where warranted psychosocial support when impacted by traumatic events in the line of duty. This is something we underestimate all the time in our country, Mr. Speaker, that you send men and women in dangerous situations and there's no debriefing. There is no type of psychosocial support to ensure that they navigate that very traumatic period. The effects of climate change are indeed real, Mr. Speaker, as we all witness the considerable heat these days. Mr. Speaker, and if that level of heat is indicative of what hell is like, all of us are supposed to repent and be baptized, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen? Indeed, future climate change projections indicate a likely increase in the frequency of extreme weather events, rising temperatures, and greater variance in rainfall. <laughs> The consequences of climate change to the fire services poses significant challenges, especially during extreme weather events such as storms, hurricanes, and droughts, as well as the secondary hazards which result in floods and bushfires. So it does not matter what conditions exist. We have to send them like Navy SEALs to rescue people and to work under very dangerous circumstances. This loan facility will allow the St. Lucia Fire Services to provide more effective and efficient coverage across the island for the protection and preservation of life and property from fire, floods, dangerous chemicals, and other hazards. This intervention is indeed timely, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, this government is being proactive and is anticipating the negative consequences of climate change for the fire services and is therefore investing the resources that will enable the fire services to adequately respond to the increasing number of weather events and other disasters. The project is to be implemented over three and a half years and expected to commence in November 2023. Mr. Speaker, our government continues to embark 
on an effective public debt management strategy which aims to reduce costs and aims at projects that build the sustainability of our economy. As I prepare to close, Mr. Speaker, I wish to accentuate that the record of our government in the short period that we have been in office has shown a remarkable reduction in our public debt to GDP ratio from 98.1% in 2020 to 85.9% in 2021 to 69.8% in 2022. Our government has shown tremendous discipline and exercised great responsibility in fiscal management. Given the legacy left by the former administration, Mr. Speaker, we will need to borrow to ensure that we provide resources to strengthen the economy, provide jobs, and enhance the resilience of our economy. The borrowing for such investments, Mr. Speaker, will over the long run improve the growth of the economy and result in a commensurate reduction in the debt to GDP ratio. So, Mr. Speaker, it is not just borrowing to invest in social services, but how you borrow. To borrow by restraining the growth in the debt to GDP ratio, giving us room to invest more in our men and women in uniform. This loan, Mr. Speaker, is offered on highly concessionary terms with a grace period of three years and is to be repaid over 23 years with an interest rate of only 0.7% per annum. I need to repeat this, Mr. Speaker. 0.75% per annum. This is unheard of these days, Mr. Speaker. As we are aware that the secured overnight financing rate, which replaced LIBOR, is currently 5.31%, and the Federal Reserve Funds rate is at 5.5%. I am therefore in full support of this resolution, Mr. Speaker, as this loan for the fire services will help to protect the people, Mr. Speaker, and their property and livelihoods. I close by paying homage to our men and women in uniform for protecting and serving our country at the hazard of their lives. Mr. Speaker, I thank you, and I now yield the floor. Thank you.